So what is water filling in communications? And let's start with the additive white Gaussian noise channel. And this is the equation for the capacity. So the capacity equals the bandwidth times log to the base two, we measure in bits, of one plus the signal to noise ratio, the power divided by the noise. Now, if we have a channel that's not just additive white Gaussian noise, but actually has some attenuation, then we need to include the gain in this formula. So let me write that in here, g squared. So that's the gain squared because it's a power, uh, and the gain is the gain on the voltage of that channel. So this, not all of the transmitted power makes it to the receiver. And here I've drawn what that would be in the case where W equals one. Let's just consider that for an example, the bandwidth equals one, normalized bandwidth, and where the noise power equals one. So we take a normalized uh, example, and let's look at this. Okay, so this is the capacity. Now let's consider we were given the opportunity to use a second channel. So each channel is of width one, uh, and if we got a second channel, what we could do is halve the power and put half of the power in each of the two channels. Now, I'm going to give an example here where the first channel is the same as the original one, but the second channel has less gain, so there's more attenuation. So let's say it has a gain where the square equals 0 0.8. Now we're going to ask ourselves, is it a good idea to use that second channel? Or should we put all of our power just in one channel, just in the best channel? So do we just use the best channel or do we split our power between the best and another one? Now to look at that, we're going to think of the log function. So let's just start by uh, looking at the log function to try to think about what that means. I've actually also written an equation here if there were three channels, and we're going to look at that example later, where the third sub-channel has 0.7. Uh, and we split the power three ways. So let's just think about the two, for example, at the moment, uh, and let's look at the log function. So the log function looks like this. It's a function that rises and then flattens off. So this is x, this is log of x, and this crossing point here is one. And that's important because we've got one plus power and it matches up with this log function. So what is this, what are we comparing when we compare C1 to C2? Well, for PT, let's say this value here was one plus PT, for example. Then the log function says the capacity you get if you put all your power in that one subchannel, this is gonna be the capacity. What about if you share the power? So for this first term here, then this is half of PT, so it's halfway between one and one plus PT. So that's one plus PT divided by two. And so this gives you this value here, which isn't, because of the shape of this log curve, the way I've drawn it here, it's not too far below that capacity. And yet we've got a chance to have another channel, which doesn't have so much because it's 0.8, so that's roughly here. Uh, and that gives you that capacity there. So when we're comparing C1 with C2, we're comparing this capacity here, where we put all the power in one, with the addition of these two. And it's pretty clear to see uh, that for these powers that I've drawn it, the addition of these two numbers is gonna be bigger than that number. So for this way I've drawn it, for this PT, you're better off sharing the power. Now this doesn't hold for all of this part of the curve. Like look, think of the curve right down close to one, like if the power is low, so if you've got a low power scenario, then this curve is gonna be steeper and it's not necessarily the case that it's better to share your power amongst the two subchannels. Uh, so let's look at some examples for this to see uh, what if we can get some, um, some practical examples to think about here. Okay, so uh, let's try for P equals one, for example. So if the power at the transmitter equals one, then C1, you can put this into the formula here, but C1 is going to equal one because it's going to be the log of two. So if we shared amongst two subchannels, then C2 is going to equal, uh, in this case, we've got 0 0.59, 0 0.59. That's for this term here. You can work that out where you take, that's one plus a half. So it's log to the base two, of three divided by two, plus uh, the term of 0 0.48, uh, 48, 
or 49 if we round it up, 0.49. Okay, and this equals 1.07. Uh, if we take the more decimal places, I've just rounded these ones here. So that's 1.07. So in this case, for this power, it is a good idea to use the second channel. You get slightly more capacity. What if we only had a power of, and I'm just considering just for the moment here, the 2. What if we had a power of 0 0.2? Well, in this case, the C1 would equal uh, 0 0.2. 6 and C2 would equal 0 0.25. So in this case, for this lower power, here's an example of what I talked about before when I said it's not actually an advantage to use the second subchannel. So if you have only a power budget, a smaller power budget, a smaller battery in your transmitter, for example, and you've only got 0.2 of power, then you would be better off putting all of that power just in the first channel and not using that second channel. So this is an interesting uh, question that we're going to be asking ourselves uh, all the time. What if we had more power than this? And let's try and get some rules of thumb out of this or some, some of the, uh, uh, some intuition, more intuition. So C1 here would equal two if you had PT of three, because it'd be log of four. Uh, C2 will equal uh, 2.4, Six, so there's quite a bit of extra capacity there from using the second subchannel, uh, and then uh, it's going to increase. So the more power you have, the more gain you're getting from using the second subchannel. Um, what about if we had that third subchannel? Well, let's think about splitting here. So C3 is 2.61. And here, C3, so you definitely would use the third ch subchannel here when you've got three watts of power. You would be better off using th all three, splitting the power across all three, even though the, it, it, this one only has a gain of 0.8 and this one only has a gain of 0.7. What if you had one watt of power? In this example, this equals 1.06. So in this case, it's less capacity than just simply using two subchannels. So you wouldn't use one, you'd use two, you wouldn't use three because it's got uh, less uh, than it had for two. So we can see three examples here. Uh, in, in this case, if you have only got 0.2, you just put all of your energy, you'd be better off putting all your energy in the first subchannel and not using the other two. If you increase the power, you'd be better off using two subchannels. If you increase it again, you'd be better off using three and so on. So what, this is where we're getting to the idea of water filling. We've got this idea now that you, you've got a choice of picking powers. So you've got a choice of which power you're going to transmit at, and you're going to have a choice of how many subchannels to use. Now, another thing that I haven't explored yet, but this is where we come in with water filling is what happens if you don't distribute the power evenly? And so now with this example in our mind, let's look at the overall optimization where we're going to be choosing how to split our power as well as which subchannels to use. So here's the formula, the general formula, uh, for uh, the water, what we call water filling. Let's try and understand why it's water filling. What does that mean? Well, here's, here's the formula. It says, in a subchannel F, if you've got an, uh, a continuous frequency response now, uh, whereas I had discrete here with only one, two, and three, uh, let's, uh, three subchannels, but let's say it's continuous with frequency, then this formula tells us that we should put a different power in each of the, at each frequency. Here I just showed an example where I put the same power, I split it between, equally between the three, but it here is telling us we actually should put a different power in each frequency band. And how much power? Well, a value k, and we'll talk about that in a minute, minus the inverse, essentially the inverse of the signal to noise ratio, really. It's the gain here, or it's the, it's the uh, power spectral density of the noise at that frequency, divided by the gain, like the squared term of the gain from up here. So we take the inverse of the gain uh, and uh, multiply it by the noise power spectral density, and that value there, uh, we take it away from a constant. Uh, and we take the positive value. So if it's, if it's greater than zero, then we allocate power. If that's less than zero, then we don't allocate any power at all to that channel. We've already had examples of that here where we, we wouldn't, in this case, it, we, we can, I think we can see that we're better off not to use 
one of these uh, these sub channels here if, if the using that extra sub channel gives you a lower capacity overall effectively this is what this formula is saying so what's that value k well the value k is chosen so that the integral of all of the powers is less than the budget of the power so these here you've got to pick these it's sort of an iterative solution where you have to uh, find the value of k such that this formula holds across all of the f well, this is a mathematical uh, expression, might be a bit difficult to understand. Let's look at an example to understand that uh, with, with some uh, practical example. So in this case, let's look at digital subscriber lines. So let's look at ADSL and VDSL. And in this case, the gain of these channels of ADSL and VDSL uh, with frequency uh, drops off like this. These are well-known uh, uh, drop off in gain for twisted pair uh, um, copper wires. So in this case what we're saying is yes the low frequencies have a good amount of gain but the higher frequencies you go the more attenuation there is. So this is similar to what we've looked up up here where we had the first channel had a gain of 1, the second one uh, the g squared was 0.8 and the third one was 0.7. So this is a, a, an example, this is a finite example of this here which is the practical one for ADSL and VDSL. And we want to ask ourselves in this in this example, uh, which, how much power do, should we put in, which subchannel should we use and how much power should we allocate to them. So there'll be subchannels in a digital implementation. We divide the frequency into subchannels. And if you'd like more uh, information on, on this, dig, what's called discrete multi-tone or uh, in, of, more often in, um, in wireless, it's called OFDM. So if you want more information on OFDM, there's links below this video to uh, explain OFDM. But basically we divide up the frequency into a discrete number of subchannels, and then water filling is gonna tell us how much power to put into each subchannel and which of the subchannels to use. So let's look at this function here, this function uh, in particular, this term here. Uh, so if I plot this, it's going to be, uh, let's say the noise power is flat, then that's constant across all the frequencies. And so when we're plotting the inverse of GF, so this goes down as frequency goes up, so the inverse is going to go up. Uh, so this function here is plotted here. Okay, so we're plotting this function here. Now what does it mean to say K minus that function? Well, here's that function. So let's, I'll just pick a value of K. Uh, let's say I'll call this K1, then that defines a line across here, a constant line across here. And then let's look at what this function here says. Well, it's K minus that number. So that's the K, that's that number. So we're talking about this distance here. So this is the distance here. And while this distance is positive, you're going to allocate power. And the as we go up the sub-channels here in, in, uh, in our discrete multi-tone or OFDM system, we're going to allocate less. What this is telling us is, is to allocate less power to as the channels goes up because there's more attenuation as the frequency goes up. And eventually we'll get to a point where we decide to stop and we won't allocate any power, we won't use any sub-channels at a higher frequency than this. So this is telling us here we should use these sub-channels here and it's telling us this amount of power that we should allocate into those subchannels for optimality. And this is where this picture is comes back to this phrase water filling. Okay, so it's here's like if you had a jug of power and you poured it in on top of this curve here, this inverted gain curve, then the water would flow in here and would settle to a constant level. And that's why it's called water filling, because you're water filling as if uh, you're filling power up to that level. That's what this formula tells us. And this gives this example before, hopefully gives you the intuition as to why we want to put different power in different subchannels. Of course, if we had more power, then that would give us a bigger value of K, uh, and then the water level would be higher, and then we would be putting power in all of these subchannels, if we had a bigger power budget, we'd use all the subchannels up to here, and this would tell us how much power to put in each of those subchannels. So hopefully this gives you an idea of why it's called water filling. So if this video has helped you, uh, please give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Uh, check out the uh, link below to the web page, which has a categorized list of all the videos on the channel, and subscribe to the channel for more videos.